So I was sitting at Taco Bell the other day, and I was kind of reflecting on some of the challenges one of my clients was having on how to organize their NX workspace for some of the Redux code in their React application. You see, when you're building a Redux application, or maybe NGRX or Vuex, you're really relying on something called indirection. In these state management libraries, indirection allows you to kind of build modules of code that manage side effects, state, and your presentation layer independently without those modules of code knowing how the other one actually works. So this presents some unique challenges when trying to figure out how to actually organize your NX workspace. Like, how do you split up your state management code from your presentation code in such a way where you're not creating these like really messy choke points in your NX dependency graph? So I want to find a way to help my client organize their NX workspace around their Redux code in such a way where the Redux code is locatable and identifiable without breaking build times. So I'm sitting there eating my taco, and it dawns on me. I've been staring at the solution the whole time. You see, not only has Taco Bell mastered the cheesy gordita crunch, but they've also taught me some valuable lessons in how to organize my NX workspace. But first, who am I? Well, I'm Mike Ryan. I'm the principal architect at Live Love App, and I'm also a Google developer expert in Angular and Web Technologies. I'm also one of the co-creators of NGRX, so I'm responsible for helping create a bit of this mess. So let's talk about the Taco Bell ordering experience for a minute before we get back into some code. So you can imagine me, I'm in my car, and I want to have some lunch. So I get in my car, and I go to the drive-thru. And I'm at the drive-thru, and I give the person my order through the speaker box. And for what it's worth, my order is two bean burritos, some fire sauce, and of course, the Baja Blast Zero. So I give my order, and a number of things start to happen inside of the Taco Bell. If you've not worked inside of a kitchen or like a fast food restaurant before, one of the unique things about the way they're organized is there's usually different stations with different employees who have different responsibilities. So there's someone who's going to be responsible for creating the refried beans, for example. So I like to imagine that when I order my bean burritos, one employee in particular goes to the vat of beans, checks to see if we need to make more beans, and if so, pulls some of those delicious dehydrated beans out of a plastic bag, dumps it in the vat, adds some water, and boom, cheesy bean goodness. Similarly, at a different station, there's a person in charge of food prep. So like, they've got all the food already prepared for them in these little buckets. And what they have to do is they have to actually make the burritos. right? So they're going to pour the beans on, add some diced onion, add the cheese, add the hot sauce, wrap it up, and send it down the line. Now, if you've been inside of a fast food restaurant, you've seen what that line looks like. It's where all the food comes down. And another employee is yet responsible, usually the person who gave the order to, for collecting the items that belong to my order, putting them in a bag, and delivering to them to me through the window so that I can go have my delicious lunch. So let's think about this example again, but let's do this in a way where you've never thought about it before. Let's think about Taco Bell in terms of code. Let's build a little bit of a UI to model the Taco Bell ordering experience and then figure out how we might organize this in an NX workspace. So first, let's say that that speaker box that I communicated my order through is represented as a component, the drive through speaker. And when I, the user, place my order, it's going to emit an event letting a parent component know that, hey, someone's actually placed their order. Because this is Redux or NGRX or Vuex, we need an action to dispatch to model this event of the user placing their order. Now, all these state management libraries highly recommend that you model all of your actions as events. So there's going to be one action to describe me going through the drive through and placing an order. And I've got that here as an action. From there, that component's going to go dispatch that to our global store. What's really interesting about this indirection state management framework is lots of different things can happen once that action has been dispatched. For example, I can have a reducer, this one's in charge of managing all the state for the orders inside of the restaurant, can listen for this particular action, update state to notify everyone else in the application that there's a new order ready to be fulfilled. A completely different module of code, in this case, this is an NGRX side effect, is listening for whenever a customer orders food. It checks to see if there's enough refried beans to satisfy that order, and if not, it cooks some more beans. Finally, one of the things inside of these restaurants is that everyone is looking at these little screens throughout the entire kitchen. And in fact, when you're in the drive through you get to see one of those screens. And it shows you your order, right? So if I'm at the refried bean station or at the burrito wrapping station, I've got a screen that shows me what orders are active in the restaurant and what I need to do to prepare that. 
So we can imagine there's some like order screen component that's listening for all the orders and showing them throughout the application. So let's take this and model it as some components or modules of code and think about the dependency graph for these modules of code. Well, if you start to look at it, one thing comes clear. Everything depends on actions inside of these state management libraries, right? We've got reducers that want to listen to them to change state, some kind of side effect solution that wants to do some side effect in response to actions, and of course the components as well that need to dispatch those actions to notify the reducers and the effects. So this can be a pretty big choke point in our dependency graph if we don't take care in how we model out our next workspace. Similarly, multiple modules of code are going to be listening to or depending on the state. We're using tools like Redux and NGRX to create shared state solutions for our entire application. So it makes sense that independent libraries in our NX workspace all want to share the same state across library boundaries. So how can we model this with NX? Well, we need to keep a couple of things in mind as we start to do this. First, we don't want to let actions be a choke point in our dependency graph. It's clear everything's going to depend on them, so let's make sure that we're taking extra care and isolating them out so that we're not creating or sort of choke points in that depth graph. We also want to organize our state and share it across multiple libraries. We want to make it clear that state can be shared across libraries, and we don't want to mix them up with the libraries themselves. Additionally, because there are going to be multiple things depending on state as well, we want to avoid them becoming choke points on our dependency graph. And finally, we want to make our state-related code easy to locate inside of our NX workspace. Indirection comes with a really big penalty, and one of those penalties is that it can be harder for developers to locate code in a state management solution. Like, where does this reducer exist? Or who's responsible for processing this effect? Don't make it more confusing for developers by creating a confusing workspace layout. So with that, I'm going to give you an example layout and talk about some of the pros and cons of it. And I really want to emphasize example. Just like Taco Bell has like five ingredients and creates a whole menu of items from those same five ingredients, I want you to take these basic concepts and figure out a workspace layout that works for you. Here's one that works for me. So in this example layout, I've done a couple of things that I think are fairly interesting. First, for any library that has components in it that might want to dispatch actions, I keep that library and its action definitions completely separate in my NX workspace. So I have a really thin like, node library to manage my drive through actions in this case, and all it has are the action definitions. And I call it drive through actions, that way it lives really close to the actual drive through library in my NX workspace. The drive through library is where all the components live, and it's going to import those actions to dispatch them to the store. Similarly, all of my shared state is going to be organized into independent NX libraries. So I have my NX state for orders and food, and I've named them so it's clear that these are state libraries. With this done, let's see how our NX dependency graph looks. So in this example now, what I've done is I've separated my actions and my state away from my component libraries. Now my drive-through and kitchen modules can depend on my drive-through actions without creating any cyclical dependencies in my NX dependency graph. Similarly, those same modules of code can read from, this, from the orders shared state library without creating any cyclical dependencies in that graph either. And I'm avoiding cho choke points. So we can learn from Taco Bell about organizing your NX workspace. Well, in this example, we want to make it so that actions can be depended on by any library. Actions really are like the cheese in your NGRX burrito. Or maybe it's that sinful thing they do where they kind of glue like the soft shell tortillas to the crunchy tortillas. I don't know. In any case, we want to make it so that, that those actions can be made available to any library in our NX workspace. We also want to make it so that state can be shared across different features. That's why we're using Redux or NGRX, is to share state across our entire application. And finally, with this approach, state-related code is really easy to identify. We've named it so that we know where our action definitions live and where the reducers live for managing state. So what will your next order at Taco Bell be? Or, or rather, how are you going to organize your next NX workspace to complement indirection state management frameworks like Redux and NGRX? Thank you, and live Moss.